Hello, booktubers. I hope you guys are having a good day or afternoon or evening or whatever time you happen to come across my video slash podcast. Today, as you can see from the image, we'll be doing The Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. Love the cover. Covers are very important. Drew me in. Basically, the book, the premise of the book, that is, is about a middle-aged woman who basically is housebound due to events from the past, which are revealed in the book. And she happens to be living alone. You're not sure where her family is, but she is by herself. She was a successful career person, um, but now is housebound, basically. And the premise is that she becomes friendly with the neighbors, um, at first with the wife, and then eventually with the teenage son. Now, as you can tell, she witnesses something from the window that occurs between the husband and the wife. She, of course, frantically calls the police, and as it turns out, there is uh, no body, no trace of this woman whatsoever. The husband, who is questioned, has no idea what she's talking about. And so you're led to believe that the girl is, the lady is crazy. As we come to find out, what she saw isn't exactly really what happened, but in a way it is. And basically, a little bit of a spoil in all that, the teenage son seems a little creepy, a little socially maladjusted and, well, as we find out, there are reasons for that. And that plays very heavily in the book and in the plot. Now, I actually, when the book came out in 2018, I checked it out from the library and I devoured the book. I thought it was very well written. You really got to see the inner workings of the main character, Anna Fox. And then I found out, after reading the book, it was his bestseller. It was a debut novel by A.J. Finn, who is a uh, male which is very interesting because a lot of these uh, psychological thrillers, um, you know, reviving Hitchcockian elements, have all been written primarily by women, by female writers. And so I wanted to see how a male would tackle this. Considering that Hitchcock always did it from when he did Rear Window, which this book kind of borrows from and pays homage to, he did it from the male point of view. So I was trying to was interested to see how he would have written a female protagonist, how this writer would have written a female protagonist. Um, I personally I don't have an opinion on that because I'm I'm a guy. So um, so women female uh, female readers, you know, by all means comment on what you thought if you thought that he captured the essence of the thought process of um, the female protagonist or not. Then, after reading the book, I found out it was going to be made into a movie, but because of everything going on in the world right now, the movie release was canceled, and it recently air dropped on Netflix last month. And of course, I watched the movie. Um, I had heard Amy Adams was going to play the lead. At first, I was a little surprised, but then I remembered that Amy Adams is very versatile. She has played numerously different characters. Um, almost unrecognizable, you know, not interchangeable, not typecast whatsoever. I mean, she was in Enchanted, and she was in Doubt, and one of her earliest roles was this blonde ditz um, airhead in Drop Dead Gorgeous from 1999, which is a Denise Richards and Kristen Dunst uh, beauty queen competition movie. Uh, she was one of the other contestants in there. So I had no doubt that she was going to be able to kind of tap into this character who was very complex um, from reading the book. And of course, Julianne Moore, it's of course plays the wife that vanishes. Although I think she's kind of been typecast and playing the same role over and over again. I prefer Julianne Moore in her early part of her careers before she hit it big. She played a variety of different roles so she basically was only in briefly. She had a very calming presence, but really it's kind of like something that you've seen numerous times in the past with better effect and a couple of Oscars 
as well. Um, and I think Jennifer Jason Lee has a bit part in the movie too. At first I thought she looked familiar and I looked it up and it was Jennifer Jason Lee. I was like, Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. I think the movie version, it's very difficult to adapt a novel into a movie for numerous reasons, because especially people who read the book first, a lot of people have preconceived ideas of how the characters look, who they imagine the character to be. And then when the movie is made and they cast people to play these parts that could, um, how do I say this? It could contradict the image that you had in your mind of said character. So it's always risky for that hand. Most times it's always better to watch the movie first, then read the book because you're going to be as opposed to reading the book and then watching the movie. That's just my opinion. Uh, the other challenge that this has is the book version, The Wind, Woman in the Window, is very much internal. It's A lot of it is from the main protagonist's point of view. So you see a lot of her inner thoughts, um, remembering things from the past, and then trying to put all the pieces together from what she saw in the window versus what she's being told. So you see a lot of it is more internal, more psychological, whatnot. And that is something that actually would be very hard to successfully transition into movie form because it's a very, it's, um, how do I say this? It's a technique that serves better in written work versus in movie or TV form because especially a book like this, which there's a lot of inner thoughts and a lot of inner monologues in the head, it does make it more difficult to make a good viable visual of this. Um, based on everything I saw, I think they did the best they could, um, in still showing the inner conflicts and the inner turmoil of the lead character. But I have to admit there was something lost in transition or translation that is. So if I was going to have an opinion of which I preferred the book or the movie, in this case, I picked the book. And I hope that does conclude my, my review of both the book and the uh, film adaptation. Um, still, you know, buy the book, watch the movie on Netflix, and make your own decision of which you prefer, if you like both of them or if you like one over the other. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Peace out.